Hi there, it's Sherry from Tree Maiden Mixed Media and it's a lovely day here in Nova Scotia. It's about 17, 18 degrees and quite sunny, some cloud but quite sunny, so a nice day. So today we're going to do a page in our journal and it's going to, we're going to create our own background and apply a focal point and some lettering. So, as the adage goes, without further ado, let's get started. Now, I've already put gesso on my page here to give it some tooth so that our uh, acrylic paint will adhere to the page. Now, I'm just going to slap on some paint here. This is just inexpensive craft glue, or sorry, craft paint, deco art. This color is African Violet. I tend to like to put the darker colors on first um, to make a sort of base and then go from there. And here we have a Again from Deco Art, a leaf green. I love this color. Now, after we put all our colors down, we can always go over and add some more. This is from Acrylic. Acrylic. Not sure. Acrylic. Um, and that's silver, metallic silver. All right, let's go in with some red. Apple barrel, uh, flamenco red. Some colors are more dominant. This red's very, very dominant, so I will be going in with it. another color to uh, to cover up some of this. It's just a cheap brush, too, by the way. And Bright Blue by Apple Barrel. These are quite opaque. And I'm going to dip my brush and clean it off a bit because I'm coming in with the yellow and I have some dark colors there. So actually I think I'm going to change my brush just to be on the safe side. Okay, and this is a bright yellow apple barrel. And he supplies all this on the uh, in the description a little bit on that red I said I wanted to cover okay I'll bring in a little more green. I don't mind these white areas too. It sort of gives your eye a rest, as they say. And let me see what other, I think that's silver, a little bit more of the silver. And 
touch more of the purple. The African Violet. I'm going to uh, put that on my brush because I want to have a little bit more control there. Now, what we're going to do now that we have our background is I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to create another background for our focal point and that will be a sort of cityscape. So I'm going to do that here and then we'll put our focal point down and then our lettering. So I'm going to pause you for now while I dry this and then we'll get to our cityscape. Now I've made sure that my acrylic paint is totally dry. Now I'm going to come in with a Sharpie. This is a fine, ultra fine point Sharpie. And I'm going to uh, draw in a in the horizon, a cityscape. So we want to start um, probably a third of the way down the page. So we'll start here. Now, if we're lucky, we won't have any problem with these uh, this marker. Sometimes it's it's uh, a bit hard on, over the acrylic paint. So there's the uh, outline of our city. Now we're going to fill in our uh, windows. I'm going to change my marker just because I think I picked up some of the acrylic paint on that marker. So, and no point in being fussy, it's not realism. So I'm going to finish putting in my windows and be right back. All right, as you can see, I've put in a few chimneys and I've started with the um, gel pen. This is a Signo Uniball white gel pen and I'm filling in the uh, windows and that helps our buildings to pop. So yeah, so that's our background. Now we're going to add um, our foreground. Now this is a cutout of a image I found online uh, on the internet. So I've added in the back some uh, foam, sort of risers. This will lift my image up and give it another dimension. So we're going to put him uh, pretty far over to the right. And as you can see, he stands out because of our, our uh, risers. And you can see a shadow here because we have them elevated. So it creates a shadow in the background, which is great. And now we're going to put on our lettering. 
our words. And our words are going to spell out, out of my element. As you can see by the look on his face, he feels out of his element. So I'm going to pause you again so that you're not having to sit there and watch me apply each letter. And then we'll come back. Hi again. Okay, as you can see, I've put on our lettering. And I'm going to put on some Mod Podge to seal this. And again, it will add dimension. And as I've mentioned before, I always try to put on several thin coats rather than one thick coat. So I hope this video finds you all well. Everybody's taking care of themselves. It's, uh, things are starting to open up here in Nova Scotia, so it's making a lot of us happy. Okay, so I'm going to dry that and we'll be back to put, actually I'm going to dry it and I'm going to add another coat of uh, Mod Podge, at least one more, possibly two. And then we'll be back to uh, close off. So we have three coats of Mod Podge on our piece today. And right now I'm um, touching it up with a Stabilo oil pencil. This is uh, what a Stabilo pencil looks like. They're good for paper, glass, plastic, and metal. So I'm just outlining my letters here, my, my words. And then I will activate this penciling with uh, water. You can use a Q-tip or a water brush like this. And this helps uh, helps your letters to stand out, gives it some uh, shading, so it looks doesn't look so one-dimensional. And we're going to put some on the edges. So if you bear with me. So hard to tell if I'm in the camera or not. So The Velo pencil is so handy. They're uh, made in the Czech Republic. I get mine online. And I will, as usual, put uh, all the supplies listed under the description. So you know where to get things if you're interested. So as you know, as you may know, looking at my subscribers, I, uh, I'm new. So I'm hoping you'll subscribe and give me a thumbs up.
as you can see this really helps your uh, work to stand out a little bit here So that's our project for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, I hope you give me a thumbs up and be great if you would subscribe. And meanwhile, I hope you stay safe, stay healthy, be kind, and we'll see each other soon. Take care.